What's up everybody, welcome back or to the channel. So today we're gonna to be looking into figuring out what I need to do in order to hook up my existing amp and subs to my new 2023 F350 using the factory head unit. Now typically a factory head unit will not have your RCA low output jacks on the back. So in this case, we're gonna to need to install some type of a converter. So the converter that we're gonna be installing today is the LC2i Pro. This is a really good converter. It's very minimal in size, so you should be able to hide this under your dash pretty easily. But this particular unit here is gonna be able to tap in to the existing speaker wires coming out of the head unit, and then this will convert that signal to a low input RCA jack, which we could then send to our amp. So without further ado, let's jump in and let's figure it out together. Okay, so if you come over here, you're gonna see this is the amp that I had from my last setup that I just bought a few months ago when I had my other truck. But since I sold that truck, I kept the amp in the subwoofers. Now I've already done a test fit of the SCAR Audio VD12 12 inch subwoofers in the new box that is set up for my F350. And I'll put a picture up over here to show you. It fits perfectly good, so I'm happy with that. So what we need to figure out is how to hook up this converter here behind the dash to the factory head unit so that we can actually get a set of RCA jacks coming out of here to go into there. Once we get this hooked up, then we're just gonna go in and use this particular kit here. This is an amp wiring kit that comes with everything you need for your power, your ground, your remote, your, your inline fuse and everything. So we're gonna be working on that as well. So right there is my 2023 F350 that I'm working on. This has the high output diesel. So again, this is gonna be the new build that we're working on. Now under the back seat here, this is the driver's side. We had the lug wrench set up right here. It's pretty much mounted with a bolt right here. What I did was I took that whole bolt bracket assembly out and I just plugged that hole with another bolt using some blue Loctite to cover that up. Now, the reason I did that is because my SCAR audio amp is gonna end up going right there and it fits perfectly right under the seat so there's no obstructions i'll have plenty of room to put all my wires i'll have plenty of room on the other side here for my rca jacks and making adjustments to the amp but this little flat shelf right here makes a perfect spot to fit the scar audio 1500 watt mono amp so that's where that's going to go and then the speaker box is pretty much going to lay right here underneath the seats so to figure out what we're working with, we need to take this whole dash panel off, which should just pop off with little pressure clips. So let me go ahead and start working on that and we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm in the truck and I pretty much took apart the whole dash. I know I probably didn't need to take apart the whole dash, but being that I've never taken apart this dash before and I don't know where all the panels and the wiring is going, I just wanted to to make myself familiar with my truck. So I took everything apart and I realized that I technically didn't need to. So if you're looking to add a converter to your factory head unit, you don't have to take any of this apart. All you have to do is take the top panel out, which is sitting right here. There's a little rubber pad right here that you just lift off the top. There's gonna to be two bolts, take those two bolts out, and then it has all these pressure clips. You're just gonna lift and pry the whole thing out. Once you take that out, you're gonna have a bracket right here that's sitting up top like that. There's four bolts that you wanna take out for that, which I have over here. They're just four bolts just like this. You're gonna take those out. Then, once you take this bracket out, there's gonna be four more bolts at the bottom of the head unit down further, which are the same bolts. So once you take those four bolts out, this whole head unit assembly here pops right out and you can actually pull back your wire loom here and access all your speaker wires. Now, I unplugged the one harness here because I wasn't sure which harness had the speaker wire. So I unplugged this one and played the radio and the speaker still had sound. So I knew it was not any of these wires over here that is sitting right here. So I unplugged that for now. So I pulled apart these two single wires, which I assume are not speaker wires, and you're left with all of these other wires here. And they're all twisted, so I assume it's a positive and ground. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is eight sets of twisted wire. Now comes the fun part, where we basically just have to go in and start testing each set of wires to figure out which one's the left, which one's the right, which one's the front, which one's the back, and so forth. Now to test which wires we're using, I'm just using this product right here. It's a little speaker tester. Once you pretty much expose a wire, you can go ahead and tap these prongs into that. And then you're just gonna go ahead 
and hit this speaker test button like that. And it sends a popping signal to the speaker of which those prongs are attached to. So that's what I'm going to use to try to hunt down which speakers are what. So let me play around with this a little bit longer and I'll come back with an update. Okay, so after testing the wires, here's what I was able to find out. So the left front door speaker, it's going to be the blue wire with the gray wire and brown stripe. That's gonna be your left front door. Your right front door is gonna be this one right here, which is the white and purple stripe and white and orange stripe. That's gonna be your two front doors. Now your left rear door is going to be this one right here, which is the, it's kind of like a light purple with a dark purple stripe. And then it looks almost like, like a brown with a green stripe, but it's this one right here. And then the right rear door, which is gonna be the gray wire and then the light green with purple stripe. And I'll go ahead and put a diagram up here of what I just said so you can take a screenshot and remember it. But those are gonna be the four main speaker wires that we have for left front, right front, left rear, right rear. So when we're trying to tap in our converter, we just have to tap into either the front speakers or the back speakers. It really doesn't matter to an extent. Now, if you happen to have certain speakers and subwoofers and tweeters where they have low pass filters and all this kind of stuff, then it might matter. But your safest bet is probably just to tap into your front door speakers. In this situation, I'm just gonna go ahead and tap into my left front door and my right front door when tapping into the line for my converter. Now the polarity does matter and I don't know which one's positive and negative. The only way to really figure that out is to probably take apart all of your doors and look at your speaker and then use your speaker pop tester here and pop the speaker a little bit and you'll see the speaker move. If it's going one way, it's positive. If it's going the other way, it's negative and you can figure it out that way. But for my situation, I'm not gonna deal with taking apart everything but just because it's so much work. I'm gonna go ahead and just work on wiring up my converter and then we're gonna tap in and take a guess and then if it's wrong, we'll switch it around. So again, let me keep working on this and we'll be back in a little while. Now, real quick, I just went ahead and attached my screen back up to here, but I left everything disconnected. For any of you that are actually looking to figure out how to take apart your dash, it's really not that hard. It's just a lot of pins. So you're gonna wanna start with the outer trim piece around the edge here. Those are just primarily push pins. You're gonna have to pop them out and be very careful. You're gonna also have to take apart the trim piece here. It's just a push pin. You just pull it out. You're gonna have the trim that goes around your key that kind of goes around the side and all the way over to there. Again, they're just push pins, pop them out. Then your main piece right here is gonna have like four bolts. There's gonna be a bolt here, here, and then two more bolts at the bottom. And then this piece here is hooked around this piece. So you're gonna wanna make sure you take these couple bolts out to give you some flexibility there to untuck it from the side. And then there's gonna be a bolt here and a bolt here with some push pins here that holds this up into place as well. So it's just a handful of bolts, but a lot of push pins. But again, if you're just looking to tap into your speaker wire with a converter, you don't need to take any of that off. You just need to take the top off and unscrew these bolts to get this unit off of the top. And then you'll have access to your speaker wire right here. Okay, so we just went ahead and got the LC2i Pro converter out of the package here. And this is basically what it's going to come with right here. So it's a very small unit. It pretty much fits in my entire hand. So it's not that big, it's not that bulky. So you have two sets of low input jacks on the right side here, which is gonna be your out. And then coming in on the left side, you have two sets of speaker inputs left and right up here. Down here, you have a remote out, you have a remote in, you have your 12 volt constant power here, and then you have your ground there. And then you also have some knobs here on the front. You can adjust your load select, your trigger mode, and your ground isolation. You have some AccuBase adjusting knobs here, and you have some base output, and main output level knobs there as well. Now over here on the side, you have a plug-in right there that you can get a plug that goes right to your base knob here. So that's kind of nice that it actually has that. Now, as far as your remote, this is what I really like about this particular unit. If your factory head unit does not have a blue remote wire coming off your head unit, what you can do is you're still gonna run a remote wire from this out right here to your amp. 
but you're not gonna hook up a remote in, what you're gonna do is you could just go ahead and, and switch this switch here to the GTO or the audio. And primarily what that's gonna allow is if you have your high input speaker wires here, as soon as you turn your radio on and this converter recognizes power from those speaker wires, it'll send a signal to the remote out. So again, this is a really nice unit. It should be fairly simple to connect. We're just gonna basically use a 12 volt wire probably from the battery and a ground wire from the battery and run it straight to this as constant power. And then we're gonna have to tap into our factory speaker wires into here. And then we'll just be able to take our RCA jack out of here straight to the amp. And then we'll just have to hook up our amp like we normally would. So let me keep figuring a few things out and working on this and we'll be back here shortly. Okay, so we're working on pulling some of the wire through the firewall here up at the front. So I figured while I'm pulling through a power and ground through the firewall for my converter box, I'm just going to go ahead and pull through my power wire from my amp as well. So what I do is I just use an old antenna like this, and then I push the antenna through the firewall from the inside out. And then under the hood, I just basically tape any wires that I'm pulling through to the tip of the antenna with electrical tape. And then down below, I pull it all through, which is what I just did. So now I have all my wires pulled through the firewall. So now I got my power wire for my amp that's gonna run to the back. And then I have a power and ground that I'm gonna run underneath the dash to hook up to my converter. So let me keep working on all this and we'll be right back with an update. Okay, so I got all my wires run along the door panel here. I just popped up all my panel trim. And I have it hidden down real nice and neat out of the way in the channel so nothing's gonna bother it. Under the middle, back here, ran it all the way up under here along the side, up under the back, through the back and popping out under the back seat where my amp is gonna mount right there. So now that I pretty much have all my wire where I need it to go back here, the last thing I need to do is just put a ground wire, but I'll bolt that into the frame under the seat in the back, so that's easy. So now I just have to work on cleaning up some of the wires a little bit, and then tying in my power and ground into the converter, and then tapping into my speaker wire, and then we should be pretty much almost ready to hook our amp up. So let me keep working on this and we'll be right back. Okay, so we are finally done and we got the amp hooked up back here underneath the seat so it is mounted to the floor. I still have to zip tie and clean up the wires just a little bit more and get my subs back here, but so far I was just testing out to see if it worked. Now over here, I have everything ran and I just have the converter sitting on the floor for now. Once I verify everything works, then I'll go ahead and mount it up under the dash. So as you can see, it is not on. Now let's go ahead, put the key in the ignition. Now watch that light up. Okay, so now we have power on the LC2i Pro. Let's go back here and check the amp to make sure that signaled. And I see some blue light there. So there we go. So now we have signal to the amp. Now I just have to bring my subwoofer box out here, plug in my subs to the speaker terminal here, and then we'll test it out. So I'll be right back. Okay, and real quick, I just wanted to go over a couple things with you. In this guide for the converter here that we installed today, they actually give you a lot of information about how to adjust each setting on the unit itself. So in case you're wondering what some of the knobs mean and how to adjust them, it actually breaks it down how to adjust everything just so that you could try to fine tune this yourself a little bit. Now, I am no professional audiophile. I always recommend taking your system set up to maybe a professional who has professional tools that they can measure your inputs and outputs to fine tune your system so that you're getting maximum performance out of it. Okay, so we're pretty much all done now. Now I left my dash disconnected here just so I could show you. So I have my converter mounted right up behind the dash right over here. So I just have it sitting back here on a metal shelf with some Velcro tape holding it into position. And then right down below, here is my volume knob for my converter and here is my volume knob for my amp. So I have everything put back together here is my box here with down firing 12 inch VD12 SCAR Audio 12s, which are shallow mount subwoofers. And then I have my 1500 watt monoblock SCAR Audio amp hooked up back here. But my whole goal today was just to show you that you could use your factory head unit by just hooking up this converter right there. And that'll allow you to get signal from the head unit down to the amp and power some subwoofers. Now, when it comes to polarity, on a single subwoofer, getting the polarity correct is probably not that big of a deal. 
the human ear probably would not even hear the difference. Now, when you have multiple subs and one of the subs polarity is incorrect, it's not going to sound real good. Come back here and have your box sitting up so you can see the subwoofers and play the music. If your subwoofers are moving outwards, your polarity is correct. If they're moving inwards, the polarity is incorrect. So pay attention. If one of your speakers is going out, the polarity on that speaker is good. So when the speaker is going in, that just means that you have a positive wire hooked up to a negative terminal and a negative wire hooked up to the positive terminal. They just need reversed. So once you get that playing good, this is what it'll sound like. Here we go. actually vibrating my phone. Sounds real good. Now again, the basis is gonna sound as good through a phone, but trust me, in person, it sounds really good. Okay, so there we go. So I just showed you that you can hook up an amp and subwoofers to your factory head unit by just using the LC2i Pro line out converter. So at the end of the day, my overall impressions of the LC2i Pro converter, I definitely give it a thumbs up and give it a go. It really does a great job converting the high level signal from your speaker wires from your head unit down through the converter to a low level line out conversion that you can send to your amp for maximum bass response. So if any of you happen to be looking to hook up an amp and subwoofers to your vehicle with a factory head unit, definitely check out the LC2i Pro because it's going to help you out. Okay, everybody. So we went ahead and we got the converter all installed. We got the subwoofers in the back sounding good again, and everything went pretty good. It did take a little time taking apart the dash and trying to figure out which speaker wires went where. But again, just take your time and do some research and you'll be able to figure it out. But as I just showed you today, this was my first time ever doing this on this truck and everything ended up working out pretty good and sounds awesome. So if you're thinking about adding an amp and subwoofers to your vehicle, but keeping the factory head unit, you're probably gonna end up needing a converter. And this particular LC2i Pro converter works great and I highly recommend it. So that's it for today's video. I hope this video helps some of you out. Go ahead and do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button and like this video. If you happen to have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And also do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you. I truly appreciate all of your support. And as always, see you in the next video.